Clive was a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous number one hit man in America. Hey, fight fans. Welcome back to another Top 10 Countdown here on Boxing Legends TV. The 34th of a career that's thus far been defined by complete dominance and absolute power. As we said in our previous heavyweight list, if we got 1,000 likes on the video, we'd do a middleweight countdown. Amazingly, we smashed over 1,000 likes in 12 hours, which is a new record for our channel. So, we're pleased to present, in our opinion, the most dangerous middleweights to ever lace the gloves up. Once again, we have to stress with you guys that the criteria for this list is purely down to how feared a fighter was alongside their punching power. Also, many great punchers have fought at middleweight but later moved through different weight classes and performed better there, so fighters like Tommy Hearns, Roy Jones Jr., and John Mugabe will not be ranked here today, as we felt their most dangerous work was in a different weight class. Coming in at number 10, we have a slightly controversial pick, as the eccentric Chris Eubank Sr. will predominantly be remembered for his work at super middleweight. But when you look back on his career, it's clear to see that all of his most explosive knockouts came from when he fought at the 160 pounds middleweight limit. Having a very short amateur career, Eubank took his time to learn his trade when turning professional back in 1985. His natural talent allowed him to be arrogant as he blew out all domestic level fighters with ease and essentially brought the style and swagger back to boxing on mainstream television in the United Kingdom. November, you are mine, you belong to me, I am the man. After stringing 24 victories in a row, he was now ready to take on one of the most murderous middleweight punchers of all time, the Dark Destroyer, Nigel Penn. But we will explain more about him later on. He's all hype, he's all hype, you know, and I, I can't wait to November the 18th to give him a good, good hiding. After beating Ben, Eubank made a couple more title defenses before moving to super middleweight in 1991, winning a title in his first bout. Then he continued to reign for nearly five years, being involved in some of the biggest fights in British boxing history. That's why half a billion people watched the second fight I had with Nigel Ben. I was being a warrior. That's what people came to see. At number 9, we have the only man on the list that regularly gave up 20 to 30 pounds in weight disadvantages to claim his name to fame, Ruby Bob Fitzsimmons. Already the 150-pound world middleweight champion, he put on enough weight to take on the ranking heavyweight fighters of his day. Ranked as the greatest fighter of all time pound for pound by the respected boxing historian Tracy Callis, Fitzsimmons was a true pioneer of the sport. He began his career as a welterweight in 1885, fighting in the home nation of Australia, although he was born in England and moved down under around the age of 10 years old. It wouldn't take long before Bob would be facing all the greatest fighters of his time, and 99% of the time he was knocking all foes into next week. The thing that stands out most about his career is the fact he was never happy facing the lesser known fighters in his weight class, as all the money and glory in the sport was in the heavyweight division at the turn of the century. So Fitzsimmons, weighing in a range of 155 to 170 pounds, was back to back taking on guys weighing in excess of 200 pounds. Against Millard Zender in 1882, for example, Bob weighed 160 pounds, as his opponent weighed an incredible 300 pounds, the equivalent of Gennady Golovkin fighting an in shape Nikolai Valuev in today's boxing. We are not entirely certain if that is a world record, but if anyone has beat it, it's most likely to be done by Fitzsimmons himself. Oh, and for the record, Bob KO'd Zender in the first round, which kind of tells you the ferocious power the man carried. Major titles were also a part of his legacy, as he won pretty much every title from middleweight to heavyweight during his close to 30-year career. He retired in 1914 with a devastating record of 61 wins with 7 losses and an incredible 57 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Coming in at number 8, we have the dubbed Mike Tyson of the middleweight division, the Dark Destroyer, Nigel Benn. Was Nigel self-destructive? Yes. It was combustible. Rages, you know, temper, anger. He could box, he could fight. He was a warrior. Without a doubt, one of the most vicious punchers of the last 30 years, Nigel didn't need any warming up when he turned pro back in 1987 as he obliterated his first 22 opponents by devastating knockout, some only lasting a matter of seconds. my money, the most exciting prospect in British boxing at the moment, Nigel Benn in the golden trunks, and that is one punch, and Ian Champler is down. As you saw in number 10, Ben will always be remembered for his two brutal encounters with bitter rival Chris Eubank, but had many other legendary encounters in the ring. 
The first round blowout of the experienced champion Iran Barkley is one that comes to mind, and of course the sad and unforgiving fight that saw Ben take on one of the most dangerous fighters of all time, Gerald McClellan, and result in a traumatic brain injury. But we'll shed more on that later. Similar to Eubank, Ben did a lot of his great work at the super middleweight division, but his relentless power and fear factory showed at middleweight is why we warranted him a spot at number 8. Alright gentlemen, you I, I both uh, signed the contract. I personally do hate him. I personally do hate him. Taking the number 7 slot, we have the currently active knockout machine, the Kazakh killer, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. The 34th of a career that's thus far been defined by complete dominance and absolute power. Now, we know many of you guys watching at home would have expected to see Triple G ranked in the top three here, but we generally don't like ranking current fighters in these all-time lists, especially considering the fact that Gennady hasn't beat an elite opponent as of yet. But it's clear to see we're witnessing something very special here. He just wants to fight. He doesn't care uh, that he's setting records. What do you like, dancing or what do you want to fight? Like, what do you want to watch? I like old school, of course, the action. He has a current knockout streak of 22 in a row over an 8 year period, and in most of those fights he's barely lost a round. Alongside his frightening punching power, Triple G also has one of the sturdiest chins to ever grace the 160 pound division, having never been knocked down or knocked out in a total of 386 fights, neither as a professional nor amateur. He claims to have worked out how powerful his opponent is after their first few jabs have landed, and if they don't affect him at all, he often leaves his chin out on purpose for his opponent to hit, just to strike the fear into him. Gennady being the performer, being the entertainer that he is, he didn't want to finish it. And if you look at some of the rounds, he puts his head out there for Willie to, to throw at him, throw, make it a fight. Maro, he never hurt me. He like points, like tick, 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 tick. <laughs> He's nothing. It's not inconceivable that Golovkin could top a list like this in the future, but he certainly needs to put some elite guys on that resume, and he's making good headway in 2017, as he is scheduled to take on the toughest test to date against Danny Jacobs on March 18th. Coming in at number 6, we have possibly the most savage man in and out of the ring of all time, Escapeda Carlos Monzon. Incredible fighter, uh, absolutely incredible. Wasn't the most artistic and the most uh, naturally balanced fighter that you've ever seen, but superbly effective and tall and rangy and immensely strong and robust. Ranked the third greatest middleweight of all time by the 2001 Ring Yearbook, only behind two men that were here at Boxing Legends rank in the top three of all time pound for pound, Harry Grab and Sugar Ray Robinson. Monzon is without a doubt the greatest Argentinian fighter of all time. The standout stat for Monzon's career is the fact he lost three of his first 20 fights and then amazingly went undefeated for the rest of his career over a further 80 fights. Within that undefeated spell, he became the WBA and WBC middleweight champion and knocked out almost every man that stepped in the ring against him. Outside of the ring, Monzon had a vicious, uncontrollable temper and reportedly beat his wife and members of the press so bad they often needed hospital treatment. Once his wife split up with him in 1978, Monzon found a new lover by the name of Alicia Munoz. But the horrible beatings continued, and in 1988, after a heated argument, Carlos beat his new wife half to death, strangled her unconscious, and then threw her off a second floor balcony, killing her in the process. That resulted in an 11 year sentence for the boxing legend. His burning rage fared him well inside the ring, as many spectators said he looked almost unbeatable throughout his prime years. But unfortunately, the anger would follow him everywhere he went in his life. Coming in at number 5, we have the only old school fighter that even the most casual of sports fans regard as one of, if not the greatest fighter of all time, Sugar Ray Robinson. I wrote a book called Boxing's 100 Greatest Fighters. I had him number 1. I'd have made him 1 through 9, but I had to put somebody in at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ray Robinson, there isn't a question in my eye, and I saw him several times, or anybody who ever saw him fight, that he was period and a paragraph, the greatest ever. We're not sure how much of this legend's career we can share with you on this small segment of the list, because we're planning on releasing a very in-depth video on him in the future, but we'll try to highlight some of the factors that make Ray Robinson one of the most dangerous middleweights of all time. From the very first time he laced the gloves up, Robinson wouldn't lose a fight in his first 125 bouts in a row, which included an unbeaten amateur career of 85-0 with 65 wins by knockout, and then went 40-0 as a pro until losing to the Bronx Bull Jake LaMotta in 1943, a fight he would later avenge a further five times just to make sure everyone knew it was a fluke. 
From a record of 40 and 1, he would then continue to go unbeaten for another 91 fights in a row, bringing his record up to 132 and 1. As we always say here at Boxing Legends, a record means nothing if you haven't got the bodies on the resume to back it up. In Robinson's case, he beat down just about every great fighter of his time from welterweight to middleweight, and any lucky man that ever watched him at ringside simply described him as the perfect fighter. He was dazzling. You could not be better than Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, it's as if God said, let me create the perfect fighter. Robinson retired in 1965 with a record of 173 wins, 19 losses, 6 draws, and an incredible 108 knockouts. Taking the number 4 slot, we have the murderous, punching Michigan assassin, Stanley Ketchell. Jack Johnson readied himself for Stanley Ketchell. The champion outweighed the challenger by 35 pounds. Having a record of 51 wins with 4 losses and 48 of those wins by knockout tells you straight away about the sort of power Ketchell brought to the ring. He even knocked down the great Jack Johnson whilst weighing 35 pounds lighter than the heavyweight champ. Johnson is down! It was a terrific right to the jaw! One of the real characters of boxing, Stanley Ketchell was a fearless man whose personality was perfectly reflected by his in-the-ring savagery and dramatic life. The first two-time middleweight champ of the gloved era, he is also considered to be possibly the hardest hitting of all middleweight champions. An unpolished brawler who loves to test an opponent's will to fight, the Michigan Assassin faced four Hall of Famers during his career. Some of history's best middleweights, light heavyweights, and heavyweights included among them. Nat Fleischer, the late ring historian and founding editor of The Ring magazine, considered Stanley to be the greatest middleweight in history. Coming in at number three, we have the man regarded by many as the hardest single one-punch knockout artist ever, Julian the Hawk Jackson. Jackson has stopped 43 of his 47 opponents for a staggering 92% knockout ratio. 17 consecutive victories, 16 by knockout, overall 11 KOs in the first round. I know it may seem like we're branding every fighter on this list one of the hardest punchers pound for pound, but it actually is quite incredible how many great knockout artists there have been in the 160 pound division when you really break it down. And Julian Jackson certainly deserves a spot in the top three due to the sheer menacing force he could generate with a single blow. And Jake is still firing back. Oh, a he big left hand. Oh, a tremendous left, left hand. Look, Tim. Great drop right like, like a button. tree. Great drop like a tree. We are cheating a little bit here once again considering Jackson did a lot of work at the junior middleweight limit. But he certainly shook up enough guys at 160 as well considering his first three fights there went like this. Jackson finished his career as a two-weight world champion with a record of 55 wins, 49 knockouts, and 6 losses. With all losses by knockout as well, so I guess in this case, it was either kill or be killed. Um, pound for pound, some critics would say that, you know, you're probably one of the strongest punchers in the history of boxing. Where did that power come from? Was it natural? Was it your training regimen? Was it the Fujiwe? I mean, where'd that power come from? Boy, I think it was natural. Um, you know, and it was something that we molded and shaped my trainer and uh, we perfected it and um, you know it worked out for us it worked out for us at number two we have without a doubt the strongest and greatest middleweight over the last 30 years marvelous marvin Hagler. marvin Hagler came out of his corner he was carrying with him all the frustrations and broken dreams of his whole life and he was going to take them all out on somebody else a great start to Hagler's boxing career began as an amateur, where he went 52-2 with 43 knockouts, and that great form carried over to the professional ranks, where he went unbeaten in his first 27 bouts. The fear factor started to grow around Hagler, as other fighters witnessed the supremely well-conditioned warrior blasting out all contenders on his route to the title. And after a disappointing draw in his first attempt for the middleweight crown, he would be sure to set things straight against WBA and WBC champion Alan Minter in his second attempt. Tries to fight back. He's being forced into a real ward. He's smothered in blood Minter, and he's in desperate trouble in the third round. He can't keep the man away. Hagler will not be denied. And it's stopped. It's stopped in the third round, and Hagler's on his knees. After becoming champ, 
Agler reigned for a further seven years, beating bitter rivals Roberto Duran and Thomas Hearns in the process, later retiring with a record of 62 wins, 3 losses, 2 draws, and 52 wins by knockout. I told you a long time ago that I was a great fighter. You said, not yet, not yet, you said. You still gotta prove yourself. Well, did I do that tonight? Before we take a look at number one, here are some honorable mentions. At number one, we have the most outrageous punching middleweight the world has ever seen, the G-Man, Gerald McClellan. Gerald McClellan is a miniature Mike Tyson. I hear you, G-Man. Look at the man's record. A 20 odd knockouts in, in the first round. The guy was a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous number one hit man in America. As an amateur, McClellan beat the sublimely talented Roy Jones Jr. in the National Golden Gloves Championships on points, which we think speaks volumes for the other skill sets this guy brought outside of his one-punch power. As a professional, the G-Man had 34 fights and won a staggering 20 of those by a first-round knockout, and that included victories over great fighters like John the Beast Mugabe and Julian Jackson twice. We would be pushing the limits if we said McClellan had a resume as great as the guys below him, but his career was tragically cut short at the age of 27 after suffering a horrendous head injury against Nigel Benn in their brutal fight in 1995. After one minute and 39 seconds of round 10, it was all over. Sometimes we sit back and wonder how great Gerald could have been if he never got brain damage. It's clear to see his punch power and outstanding athletic abilities would have undoubtedly saw him victorious in many more title fights. And it's interesting to think what would have happened if he faced the undefeated Roy Jones in a rematch, or other great fighters like James Tony or Bernard Hopkins. We'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that, so drop your comments below on how you think McClellan's career would have fared had he come out of the Ben fight unscathed. Thanks for watching, fight fans. We hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is Boxing Legends TV, signing off.